Passion is not hot, it is cold. In the languorous summer heat I sit caressing my limbs with lotion as bright bikinis run past and dive into the water. Sunglasses reflect the light but not the heat, I take a sip of iced tea and try holding a book above my head to block the sun's glare. My arm quickly tires. I put down the book, close my eyes and inhale the chlorinated odors of the swimming pool. My consciousness swims in a bright orange darkness and relaxes to swimming pool sounds, bouncy diving boards, screaming children and swimsuits dripping on the way to towels. Sweaty moisture glazes my chest and drips into folded crevices of skin. I reach for the suntan lotion, but before I open it, footsteps run by and dive into the water, raining a giant splash upon me. I awake and spy the culprit, a short freckle-faced kid who by now was at the other side of the pool. I dry myself and see climbing out of the water a tall dark-skinned girl whose small teenage breasts jut unashamedly out of her water-shrunken bikini. She returns to her towel, dons sunglasses and walks to the water fountain while I stare at her spongy buttocks knocking against one another. Without embarrassment the girl pulls up the bottom half of her bathing suit, covering the pale strip of skin made accidentally visible. I turn over on my stomach and massage my back with lotion. Now a group of adolescents are jeering at another girl for not jumping into the water. Come in, one boy yells. It's not cold. The others start splashing wildly at the girl, causing her to scoot a safe distance away. Eventually the teens forget about her, and the girl removes her t-shirt, glancing about to make sure no one was watching. She approaches the water and samples it with her toe. It's cold, she says. Still wary of being splashed, she goes to the shallow water and descends the first step. Moments later she steps down to where the water reaches her upper thighs. She shivers and hops around with hands high in air as if groping for a life preserver dangling from the sky. Adjusting to the temperature, but determined to keep her blonde hair dry, she descends to the bottom step, bringing the water level to her small bosom. But it is too much, she hastily retreats to the top step, watching the swimmers half enviously. Go ahead, I think to myself, do it. But she just stands there, gliding her hands over the water. Then, with sudden bravery, she steps down, for years I've performed a ritual with every woman I've made love to. With Cynthia, as with the rest, I did it unthinkingly, almost religiously, while never sure of its meaning. Cynthia was the love of my life in senior year at Emory. She had stellar SAT scores, tests, they're so inconsequential, and was captain of the school's fencing team, sometimes a foil is just a foil, she used to say. The first time I saw her, she was dueling an invisible opponent in the library parking lot, gracefully twirling her foil and lunging ahead like a crazed ballerina. A few weeks later, we were naked in bed, legs brushing idly against one another. Passion was three hours over, or was it about to begin? Kissing her lips lightly, I nudge her to lie on her stomach, which she does without opening her eyes. I want her, I savor her beauty as the tips of my fingers graze over her soft back. Cynthia sighs, and I rest my head against her shoulder, feeling the rise and fall of her respirations. Even in the dark I could see her lazy nipple, relaxed but alert to the possibility of arousal. Her eyes were closed, not asleep, but lulled into erotic repose. When she was like this, I would take out an ice cube, smuggled from the freezer, and bring it to the base of her spine. When she felt it, 
she would wriggle out of position and issue a panicky laugh. An instant later, I had already removed the ice cube and was guiding her head to the pillow. Her naked body lay before me, presenting an almost infinite surface for the ice cube to explore. Slowly, so slowly, I touch her ankle with the ice cube, holding her legs to keep her from pushing away. Again she laughs, and the ice cube inches up her thigh to the borders of her pubic hair. I stop, take the ice cube away and stare at the smiling face of the woman I adore. Cynthia giggles, bracing for the next icy touch, for 20 whole seconds I sit beside her, watching her tense expectation. Next, her elbow, the ice cube skates up and down her arm, leaving a cold trail of tears. Eyes closed, I whisper, lifting the ice cube to the other side of her body, catching the drips with my hand to disguise my next move. The ice cube flits against her fidgety breasts, electrifying points of contact, inching towards her pubis, encircling it like an inward-moving spiral, while she lies there, absorbing these sensations with pleasurable impatience. As the ice cube begins its final descent, can I confess this? I feel less like a giver of pleasure than a torturer, a man extracting confessions of pleasure to gain a vital piece of information. But even torturers can Thank you.